Today I'm going to be fixing a bunch of broken Xbox controllers. When I say a bunch, I mean I got three. And when I say fix, I mean I'm going to do my best. Now all of them exhibit the exact same problem. When they're plugged into the console, there's no response on any of the buttons. From what I've seen in just about every instance, this ties back to a broken wire in the cord here. It already looks a little kind of like pinched and weird, so let's take it apart and get a look. I wanted to slide this strain relief down away from the controller so I could keep it on while I cut the wire. I tried using WD-40 to loosen it up, but it just wouldn't budge. The cable was too warped in this area, so I said screw it and cut the wire here and here. Then I use a pliers to work out the piece still inside the strain relief. I make sure the hole is clear and set it aside for later. I didn't get a good shot of where the wire was broken, but I'm pretty confident it was right in front of the strain relief. Next, I pull the cable jacket off this end, pull back the metal shielding, and splay out the individual wires. Focusing on the connector end now, I do a little twisty move with my side cutters to strip the jacket and pull it off. Same as before, I pull back the metal braid shielding and splay the wires out. I try to get the strain relief back on and fail because I should have done this before stripping the cable. To overcome that problem, I wrap electrical tape over the loose wires which allows me to get the strain relief back on without too much trouble. Then I take the tape off and clean up the WD-40 I used to lubricate it. Now I strip all the wires on each end of the cable to prepare for soldering. I also twist and tin the ends of each wire to make soldering easier and keep loose wire strands at bay. At this point, it's just a matter of soldering all the wires together with the correct color orientation. Before soldering each wire, I put a small piece of shrink tube on one end, then I cover the solder joint with it and shrink it down with a small torch. This insulates each connection and prevents them from shorting to each other. Now I solder the ends of the braided shield together. Lastly, I wrap the rework area with electrical tape and end up with something that looks like this. You can see I still have just a little bit of room to maneuver the strain relief. And now I'll put it back in place on the controller housing. Back of the shell goes on, reinstall the screws, and lay the sticker back down. Then we inspect our work. Doesn't look too bad. It's good. It's working. We've done it. That's a good repair. With that taken care of, we're going to do the exact same process on the blue controller. I'm not going to show it because you just saw it. We'll just go right to the end result. Yes. Alright, blue one's working as well. We've got one more to go. The green controller. As before, I'm not going to show the process again, so let's go right to the end result. The green one seems good. Yep, no issues. All good. Comparing these with one that hasn't been worked on, you can see pretty much the only consequence is that we lost some of the length between this core and the strain relief. This one has not been tampered with, it was already working, and here's one we fixed, so you can see how short that distance is. But we still have our strain relief, and overall, you know, it's pretty much the same as the original. There's the blue one, and the green one. All are working. That's it for this one. I hope you could get some use out of this video, and thanks for watching.